<laughs> Man, I love said blotter. Oh hey Maxwell, what are you up to? Oh hey Maxwell, I'm just watching my favorite movie of all time, United Passions. Oh that's great, uh, question though, when do you plan on, you know, grading those World Cup 2022 kits? Maxwell? Oh sorry, I was just distracted by the greatest film of all time, United Passions. No yeah, I got that, but uh, wh when are you gonna make that World Cup 22 kits video? I mean, I already did two videos on them. Yeah, but that was about Nike and Adidas, and it's October and you know, you still haven't really graded them yet. Listen man, you're talking to me at a very busy time right now. <laughs> Dog, just make the video. No, I'm not making the video. Why not? Listen, I'm not gonna sit in front of my phone dead inside looking at these awful abominations. Alright, so maybe you need a little bit of a reminder, so listen closely here, okay? You make money from this. Well, here we are. World Cup 2022. It's time to grade some kits. For those of you not familiar with how this series works, it's pretty simple. All we do is just look at a bunch of these shirts and then grade them on an A to F range. Ad time. Today's sponsor is OneFootball. OneFootball allows you to follow your favorite teams, leagues, and even players. You can get live match scores, alerts, player ratings, and know exactly what's going on with instant up-to-date news. In addition to all these great new features, OneFootball has given us something even better. The app is now offering Indian Super League fans everywhere, except in the Indian subcontinent, the opportunity to stream all live matches and highlights. But it's not just the Indian Super League, it's also other great major leagues, and it's also for free. To any new friends, the Indian Super League is just about to start, so here's the chance to watch legends like Sunil Khetri. And remember, this is all free, so go down in the description, click that link, download one football for either Apple or Android, because I promise, you won't want to miss out. And we're off with a banger, Qatar's home shirt. This is one of the less terrible looking Nike shirts. I think what we have here is a nice concept. You have the Qatari flag design basically right on the edge of the sleeves. What really just takes points off for me are the logos in the middle. It just does not look right. I feel like if you put them on both sides of the chest, it would just look more like a complete shirt, but uh, Nike doesn't like doing that. The away shirt, however, I do like the base of the shirt where the colors are more so like a beige representing the deserts of Qatar. And then you have those patterns kind of splotched on everywhere and it looks really clean. In terms of the content that Nike has provided here, this is probably one of the better ones. Next, we have Ecuador with their home shirt and it's clean. I like the added bits of the dark blue and red collar on the sides. You have a little bit of blue and red as well. It's nothing special, but I'll give it a good grade because at least it's complete. Ecuador's away shirt though really shows the potential of what happens when you have a lesser known brand making a shirt because this is this is beautiful. You get sucked into the dark blue, there's those geometric patterns subtly in the base as well. And then speaking of the other trim, you have the thick white sleeves, and there's also the Ecuadorian flag just kind of sneaking into there. Ecuador also have a third shirt. It's really not that great, it's basically the home shirt, but with a gray base. Next up we have Senegal and it's okay. It's inspired by I believe the 2002 designs when they defeated France, so fair enough there. But in terms of the execution of making a retro design look more modern, it kind of falls into the mid category for me. Oh yeah, I, I love this one. So next we have the Senegal away shirt which is an insult to the country of Senegal. You guys remember that Euro 2020 Netherlands shirt? It was just beautiful, these abstract shapes forming a lion. It was just magnificent. We've now downgraded to Hugh Hefner. This looks like a f***ing candy wrapper, man. Like I could put like a giant chocolate bar and wrap the jersey around it. <sighs> We still have 28 more of these to go, man. Next up, Group B, and we first start out with England's home shirt, which isn't really that great nor bad, it's just kind of mediocre. I do like the gradients idea as if it was 2012 again and gradients were the coolest thing to hit a shirt, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with this color scheme, especially since this is a color scheme inspired by the 90s shirts. Now England's Away though, is exactly what the home shirt should have been. Finally, we have a red England shirt with more than one singular color. You have the dark blue collars and the trim and a little bit of light blue also on the collar as well. And I also really like how both of the logos are light blue too. I think it really makes the kit pop out more. Lord knows if this is actually going to be Iran's shirt going to the World Cup because I have heard some rumors that they might be bringing other ones, but 
As of right now, it's this shirt. And again with the lesser known brands, they're hitting. This mother don't miss. No, he's f***ing good. That mother don't miss. I really like that wavy pattern with the green and the red in the middle there. You can also see very subtly this geometric pattern above the wavy bits, which just kind of gives the shirt more texture, and I really respect that. And then you have the collar and the trim, which are very tiny strips of red and green, but I think it really works. It kind of contrasts that base of the shirt where it's very thick, wavy lines. So yeah, it's a great shirt. Iran's Away shirt is basically the home shirt, but with a red base. It doesn't look as good as the home shirt, but I mean... It's alright. Do I really have to talk about the shirt again? F*** me. F*** me. F*** me. So next up we have... The US's home shirt. I mean, it's just crazy. Nike is an American company and we get dog sh like this. And of course the marketing PR statements are like, Well, no one will actually care about the shirts once the team starts winning. Motherfucker, we aren't 2002 Brazil. I mean, just... F*** this shirt. I don't want to ever see it again. I have to see it again though. And then we have... The Away shirt, which looks honestly worse in my opinion. I mean, like I said before, it's a tie-dye shirt. This is something I'd wear on like a 4th of July party if I was like 8 years old. And if you've seen it on the pitch, it looks worse. It looks even worse somehow. Alright, so our first Adidas candidate though. Wales. I think it's a bit of a downgrade from the one previously that they used in qualifiers and the Nations League and also the Euros. But I mean, it's... Kind of your typical Welsh shirt, to be honest. I think it's also a team wear jersey. I do like that they've at least added something to the collar, a little bit of green and white, but yeah, I mean, it's not really that impressive. Wales Away shirt, though, I actually really like. It kind of reminds me of Christmas with the collar design they have there. But again, it just kind of goes back to the whole white shirt vendetta that I have. It's just kind of plain. I like the collar design a lot, but I just feel like you could maybe do something like the 1990-92 shirt. Even if it was just a subtle pattern that was just gray on top of the white base, I mean, it still adds a little bit of something. On to Group C, and we start out with the traditional Argentinian home shirt. And it appears Argentina are back in black with their home shirts. Beautiful, beautiful. I love when they add the black trim and collar. It just completes the shirt. There's also a subtle pattern on the base. It's not like the Argentina Copa America one, but it's still pretty solid. Argentina's away shirt is, um... I don't really know what to think of it, to be honest. I think when you see the flames and think of the inspiration from the sun of the Argentinian flag, it looks pretty cool, it sounds pretty cool. But, like... Purple? Uh? Saudi Arabia decided to not change their home shirt from qualifiers, and honestly, thank God, because it's a very good looking shirt. Could it maybe have a little more green? Sure, I think so, but I do really like the subtle palm tree leaf pattern that they have going on here. Now, if only they didn't change the away shirt because it looked beautiful. It was only just the home shirt, but green, but it was beautiful. Nike basically just decided to throw in a thick marker, run it around the base a few times, maybe a hundred times, just to give it a little bit of a unique texture. I don't know, I don't really dig it that much. Now finally, I didn't think it was possible, but we have done it. We've reached a magnificent looking shirt, Mexico's home. It has this absolutely breathtaking pattern on the upper base of the shirt. The design is inspired by what is called the Quetzalcoatl. But in Mexican culture, and finally, for once in this video, we're talking about culture, the Quetzalcoatl is the god of wind, patron of priests, and the inventor of calendars and books. And occasionally, the Quetzalcoatl is also depicted as a symbol of death and resurrection. And I've always said this, anytime Mexico has a green base for their home shirt, it always is a hit. And this one is the biggest of hits I've seen in, honestly, ever. But you thought we were done with Mexican bangers? Oh, absolutely not. Just look at this away shirt. I'm gonna Again, it's inspired by the Quetzalcoatl, and it's this time all over the shirt. The base is not necessarily a white, it's kind of like a cream-ish white. And then you have the red logo, the Adidas stripes. The shirt is honestly so good that you kind of forget that the new Mexican Federation badge looks terrible. Poland's home shirt, which is basically the same pattern that the Saudis have for their away. This time it's only on the shoulders. Yeah, just, you know, typical Nike being Nike. I will say the away shirt, although there's not much effort put into it, it does look clean and it'll probably look even better on the pitch. France's home shirt, I can't really hate it. It's just clean. I don't think it's exceptional, but it's a nice shirt. And it's always great to see the champions wearing gold. 
only to lose to Australia. France's away shirt, despite the pattern that represents iconic moments in French history being pretty subtle on the shirts, I still really like it. I think with every other Nike shirt that we talk about, it can obviously have more colors, some navy blue, red, maybe even gold, maybe even all. I feel like all could actually create a beautiful away shirt. Again, it's just kind of that wasted potential. You got something really great on the base, but everything else just feels a little too bland. Australia's home, another Nike shirt, this one kind of honestly similar to the Netherlands, where it just looks really weird. It's very splotchy. It, it's not that great. The away shirt is even worse. Denmark, I'm sorry, but this is just not it, and I'm not even gonna bother putting any energy into looking up the away in third, because you know exactly what they look like. Just give them the grades here. Tunisia, what do you have for us? Ooh! Ooh! Kappa just love releasing banger shirts. I mean, think of Venezia, man. Tunisia with this wonderful looking subtle pattern on the base. The design, I'm reading off the footy headlines thing again, is based off the armor of Hannibal. And I mean, just look at the detail. They did not f around whatsoever. They didn't care about modernism or anything. They just gave you this wonderful piece of art. Like I said, man, a shirt is like a canvas. And when it comes to the World Cup, you want to display all those details of your culture, because I think that's what truly makes a beautiful shirt. With the away shirt, these things happen. The home shirt is just so good that you have to copy it for the away. It doesn't look as good just because you can't really see the design as much. But I mean, it's still better than pretty much every other white shirt we've seen so far. Adidas keeps throwing in some of these really good shirts, giving me just a little bit of hope, only for me to see another Nike shirt and wanting to end it. I love when Spanish home shirts not only have the gold, but also this touch of navy blue, kind of adds more depth to the shirt. It also reminds me of the good old days, 2010, when I didn't have to care about taxes. Good times. The Spanish away shirt though, the wave gradient thing that they have on the base is just... I don't know, I feel like another color would definitely have done it. Maybe a dark blue, because you don't see like the distinct design as much. Then again, that's kind of Spain. They either really hit with their away shirts, or they look absolutely terrible. Costa Rica home. Thank you, New Balance. Costa Rica's away shirt. Oh. It just throws it back to the beautiful days of 2018 World Cup when every single away shirt was the blandest white tee I've ever seen. Germany home, we have the Ben 10 fit. But jokes aside, I actually really like this shirt. It reminds me of 2008 when Germany had basically this design, but it was a red base. I wouldn't say it's the most amazing German shirt going to the World Cup, but it's still a solid design. I love when they add gold to their shirts, and again, it's here with both the badge and also the Adidas logo, and I think maybe even the color with a little bit of maroon there too. I mean, yeah, it'll be exciting to see Evil Ajax at the World Cup this year. And then we have Germany's away shirt, which feels like an improved design of the 2014 away shirt. Look away, Brazilians. I'm going to show it right now. I love the maroon pattern on the base. I feel like it could have maybe had a little more touches of gold and I put it up higher, but still, I really like this shirt. Thank God there were three Adidas teams in this group because Costa Rica was truly depressing. Japan's home shirt is easily the best shirts. Well, okay, now that we've looked at Tunisia, I would say the second best shirts in this World Cup. I don't know what it is with Japanese home shirts, but they always look great, and this one with the origami base is no different. Then there's Japan's away shirt, and again you see the origami designs, this time they're more like a 3D effect. I wish the design that we're seeing on the shoulders and sleeves would be expanded to the base, but this is still a really nice shirt. And I'm not gonna add more points because of this, but if you've ever seen the long sleeve version of this shirt, Oh, it is salivating. Into Group F, and we start with Belgium. As my father would say many, many years ago, diners, drive-ins, and dines. The Belgian away shirt is very confusing, but at least there's more context to this whole colored jumble f we have here. The shirt is inspired by an EDM festival called Tomorrowland in Belgium, and it's part of this whole collection they call the Love Collection. For me, the shirt is like coconut water. It's like an acquired taste, because I feel like this is definitely going to be split. There's going to be a group of people who really like this shirt, and there's going to be a group of people that really hate this shirt. So for Canada, they basically have the same shirts as they did in the qualifiers. For some reason, there was just never a deal to produce a new shirt for the World Cup. So we just have these really shitty team wear shirts to grade. And I mean, this is an F, this is an F, and yeah, this one's also an F. Rocco home. Oh god, not again. 
again, not again. I don't want to go back to Puma. Morocco's home is inspiration from a retro shirt that looks significantly better than this piece of sh**. I was okay with this design when I first saw it, but the more that life has gone on and the more that I thought about that retro design, this is such awful execution. And now we return to the Puma away shirts again, and this one, I mean, it's better than all the other ones, but uh, I mean, it really doesn't say much. Croatia's home shirt just looks like a normal Croatian shirt had just gotten corrupted. The away shirt has at least something different to it. It's unique, but not all things unique are going to look good. We're on the Group G, where we now have Brazil's home shirt. And it's just kind of your typical Brazilian home shirt. Yellow base with a little bit of green and also a tad bit of blue this time too. But also, the yellow of this shirt is the same shape as the one used in 2002 when Brazil won the World Cup. And considering Neymar is in peak form right now and the Brazilian team doesn't look like a bunch of frauds, I mean, who knows, this shirt could be the one that brings another trophy to Brazil. But another thing also that was added to the shirt was this like Jaguar pattern. And honestly, it looks kind of corny. But if you thought that was corny, Here's Brazil's away shirt. You know that movie, Rio? I mean, everyone probably forgot it, but now that I've mentioned it, it may have popped back in your heads. I don't know why, but every time I see this shirt, I just think of that movie. But yeah, there's not much to say here. Blue base, this weird Jaguar pattern on the sleeves, it doesn't look good. Who's ready for more Puma? I sure am. Next we have Serbia, and this one I can at least tolerate. With this home shirt, there's some gold, which I can appreciate. It makes me like it just a little bit more. Ah, Ser Serbia's away shirt. Just, just put it on the screen. Next up we have Switzerland's home shirts and it's all right. It's got some like line designs on the upper shoulders, but that's about it. As you can observe with every shirt, my soul just drains more and more and now it's gone. Uh, we have the my name is Swiss away shirt. You know, maybe Cameroon can save us. It's okay. I like at least that there's some red and yellow just kind of chilling on the shoulders there. And then also there's this subtle stripe pattern going down the base. The away shirt is pretty much the same thing, but it really just looks worse. Portugal home. Oh. Oh. It just never ends. You know, I, I had this deleted in my mind. <coughs> <coughs> you see, this, this is literally killing me. But I have had this deleted out... <laughs> Why? <laughs> I literally can't finish this. As I was saying, I have deleted this from my mind. It is gone, but now it is returned. And it just makes me depressed. We have the Monaco Portugal shirt. This is artistry, you know? I mean, you just have to, you have to put in some some real thought into what you're looking at. You see, it's red and green. It, it represents the Portuguese flag. I, I can't do this, man. And then we have, <laughs> we have the Portugal away shirt. I mean, <laughs> Nike. Oh, I just, every single time I see a new Nike shirt, I just celebrate. Yes, a new one. This is a health bar representing how close I am to really just putting an end to them. You know, at least Puma didn't up the Ghana home shirt too much. It would have been nice to have a little bit of, I don't know, culture like 2014 even 2020 when they had those magnificent home and away shirts, but uh, we just have something that is honestly very similar to what they did with Senegal. And then you have the away shirts. <laughs> you have this like Ghanaian flag design within a box. I feel like I'm looking at a motocross shirt, man. Uruguay's home shirt is just your typical Uruguayan home shirts. There's not much happening here. I wish there at least would have been like a sun design or something, but I mean, we have to look in the corner there. Oh, what's that? It's Puma. We have the away shirt. I read a comment on how this shirt is literally a meme in Uruguay. And shout out to you guys in Uruguay for that. I don't understand the box design, but I really do not understand why they keep adding stripes as if, again, that will actually save the shirt. I mean, Puma could have just gone with the triple stripes and I would have said, oh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, I like the collar and the trim, and the shirt may be a little bland, but you know, at least it's clean. I'm losing it, I'm actually f***ing losing So we're gonna close this off with, finally, two good Nike shirts. I didn't think this would ever be possible. South Korea, I don't know what design agency came up with this, but well done. Honestly, well done. You get my applause right here. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the love of God saving at least the end of this video. I really love the tiger pattern that they have on the shoulders and sleeves. It reminds me a lot of what they did with Australia back in 2018. And finally, we end off with the South Korean away shirt. There's some culture with this one as well, as the base represents the taiguk, which represents national pride and balance between heaven and earth. Heaven being blue, earth being red. This is the beauty of football shirts. This is where potential goes sky high, because this for me isn't just a football shirt. It's also something that you could just wear casually on the streets. So yeah, to end off this video, a high grade. Thank the heavens. Well, hope you guys enjoyed uh, that train wreck of a video. Um, it started out well. I had some hope. You know, I thought that maybe, maybe I've been too negative. And then it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. But of course, a massive thank you to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, Santali Hank Dennis, El Favi, Milliway 9 Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suomez, Araisan, Arnolfo Martinez Jr., Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Juan Leras, Kev FM, Nguyen Dim Min Tang, Parafocus, Rory Burns, subscribe to Tende Tem. Let me, let me change my light real quick. The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Carlo SG, Chris Damaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Jordan Clavin, Mohamed Obokhail, MX Wee, Patrick Barley, President Pulisic, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you'd like, follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 15,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch, and don't forget about that charity stream. But until then, I'll see you guys.